Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here. And today I am so honored to be joined by award-winning filmmakers, some of my favorites, honestly, the Kendrick brothers, Alex and Steven. Uh, we're here to talk about the home entertainment release for their films, Show Me the Father and Courageous Legacy. Welcome gentlemen. I am so happy to be able to share what God is doing through your lives. Hey Jeannie, how are you? So good, so good. This has awesome. been a, a blessed season for me. Just had a baby. Um, really? Congratulations. Congratulations. How old is your baby? He is seven weeks old. Wow. Are wow. you getting sleep? I am. The grace of God. God yes. knew. He's like, they're going to need a sleeper and a really well tempered child. Oh, that's is so this your first child? This is, I have three in heaven, and this is my first one that God allowed for us uh, to have. So he's our What? Yeah. Wow. wow. Congratulations. Thank you. So, you know, these films actually are really touching. I did get to see Show Me the Father with my husband. We screened it uh, before it was even released. And um, it's just beautiful to see um, just God the Father, obviously, his role, and also just how important the role of a parent is as specifically a father. So can you kind of talk to us a little bit about that? I know you guys released the films. Well, what are some of the testimonies or some of the, the feedback that you're getting from these incredible films? Wow. Well, you know, first, first, it's a blessing to be able to, to tell these, <coughs> excuse me, it's a blessing to be able to tell these types of stories. Um, we had finished the movie Overcomer, went back into a season of prayer. Stephen actually came to me and said, Alex, there's something on my heart that, uh, that I want to pray through. And that was doing a documentary on fatherhood. And uh, Stephen had the title and everything, Show Me the Father, which comes from the disciples asking Jesus, Lord, we, we, we've seen you, but show us the Father. And Jesus basically says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And, uh, he, you know, God the Father uh, and his son, Jesus Christ, want a relationship with us, a daily relationship with us. And uh, so Stephen was kind of the leader for this, this film. And uh, we had some great producers um, and Rick Altizer who helped us in, in the direction of it. But we, uh, uh, we came up with five very powerful true stories. And these stories are amazing. They will grab your heart. They have natural twists in them. And uh, they're very cinematic. And so we filmed these stories, but each one deals with fatherhood from a different perspective. One that didn't have a father at all, one that had a terrible father, one with a father that they lost. And, and you just kind of go through and, and find out, well, how do we view God the Father in light of our earthly experience with our dad? Because some of us had great dads, and it's easier for us to believe God loves us. Some of us did not have a good role model as a father, and that makes it harder to wonder if God the Father loves us. And so this movie turned out to be more powerful than we expected, and uh, we were so grateful to release it in theaters, and now it's coming out on DVD and streaming, and hope, hopefully it'll have a, a long life of ministry. Yeah, have you, have you seen the impact that it's had on people? Are you getting a lot of feedback? Yes, we be attended multiple screenings. Uh, we were with 900 pastors in June in Nashville, and just the responses were really cool because so many people, even in ministry, uh, they love God and they have given their lives to Jesus, but they were wounded by their own earthly fathers growing up. And they don't know how to relate well to God as a loving father. And so this movie uh, doesn't beat up dads. It actually kind of turns on the light and you begin to realize that God has a bigger plan for your story and that he can bring healing to that woundedness. And then to be able to relate to God as a loving father is a transformational thing in a person's life. So uh, one of the guys... Uh, that was attending that screening in June, he'd been disconnected from his dad for 23 years. And while watching Show Me the Father, he said, God spoke to his heart and said, it's time for you to, to, to reconcile with your father. Since then, he has contacted his dad. They've actually met now in person, embraced, wow. had a conversation. He said, it's amazing what God has done now that I have taken steps towards forgiving my dad uh, because his dad basically abandoned the whole family, you know, 
And so, uh, but we've heard of people giving their lives to Christ as soon as the credits are rolling, you know, yes. of the movie. There was a lady that was a security guard at a screening in Alabama, and she was just there to make sure that nobody was going to pirate the movie. And she <laughs> yeah. got caught up in the film because it's it's riveting, some of these stories in Show yeah. Me the Father. And so, but when the movie was over with, she walked over to a friend of mine and she said, my dad shot me with a gun when I was a kid and went to jail, I almost died. And she said, I've hated my dad, I've been so bitter and I've struggled with all kinds of issues and depression. And she said, and I've been searching though for what is the answer. And, and uh, she said, and now I know, I need to give my life to Christ and relate to God as my perfect wow. father. So um, the Lord is amazing uh, at how he can touch each of us individually. God will personalize, uh, to each of our hearts, what we need to hear by his Holy Spirit. So yeah. our prayer has been that as people are watching the film, that yes, they would be entertained. Yes, they would be caught up in these stories, but that they would have an encounter with God and that they would walk away and say, I learned how God can become my father or okay. God became my father as a result of seeing this film. Hmm. That's amazing. Wow. What a story with the security guard. Um, is that what you're hoping for audiences to take from it? Like, you know, or, or like, how can we get people to give this as holiday gifts? What would be a good, you know, way to just be like, hey, you know, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so we have we have three ways that we're releasing it uh, in home video and, and church licensing. So starting actually today, you can go to showmethefathermovie.com and your church can license it and show it to your entire congregation, your community wow. as an outreach. So that's one way. Another way is on December the 7th, Show Me the Father. And for that matter, our other movie, Courageous Legacy, are coming out on DVD as a two movie set. And uh, and it's also they're both they're both also available in streaming. So you can digitally watch it starting December 7th or buy the DVD of both films, Show Me the Father and Courageous Legacy. But we want to stress, we love when churches take a step and use it as a ministry tool. So even now, if you go to showmethefathermovie.com, your church can license it. You show it to your people, a men's group, your entire congregation, invite your community to come. And we've seen thousands of churches do that. And the ministry impact is so encouraging. Mm -hmm. The pastor can talk to them after the, after the movie. People can stay afterwards and have conversations about it. And we've seen a lot of ministry and healing in that regard. So, uh, so again, today you can stream it. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you can um, show it at your church with a church license. Uh, and then December 7th, you can get the disc or stream it uh, online. That's awesome. I love that. Um, you know, in Show Me the Father, it's amazing because you guys had so many different athletes, you know, to kind of share so vulnerably. And, you know, let's be honest, with men, it's hard, you know, to get them to share about their father wounds or even mm -hmm. the gushy parts of their dad, you know. And, and I know you guys also shared. It was beautiful to hear your own stories. Um, but how did you kind of get that happening to come together? Sure. Well, with all of our movies, we pray a lot as we're going in <laughs> and we're like, God, we can't do it, but you can. And so would you open the doors, provide what we need, send us the people. And so we went to the fatherhood commission in the fall of 2019. And we were networking with over a hundred fathering ministries, interviewing leaders, uh, hearing their stories. And they were also introducing us to stories that they were familiar with. And that's where the link came in, where we heard the Sherman Smith, Dylan McCullough story. We heard about oh. Jim Daly. Uh, that's and a his movie. Story. Wait, that's a movie yeah. all within itself. I just that's right. Say. That's right. And we, we had that conversation. Should we just make this into a, the, a full length movie? Because it's so you good. You still can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, people can get a great appetizer of that story watching Show Me right. the Father. So, but we were realizing the main character in this movie is God the Father. It's not necessarily any individual person because uh, we wanted people to, to understand a better picture that the seven roles that dads are supposed to be playing on earth are actually reflected in scripture as to the roles that God plays in our lives and that fatherhood did not start on earth. It was came out of heaven. You know, God was a 
father in eternity with his son before he ever created us. And so, um, but fatherhood on earth is actually an introduction to those, to that role of God in our lives. And uh, when dads fail, it uh, can bring so much damage. And you see that even in secular statistics, that the common number one denominator of people in prisons, on drugs, sex trafficked, uh, dropouts with teenagers, teen pregnancy is fatherlessness. That is the, statistically, if you do the research, it links back to dad was not connected in their lives or he abused them or wounded them or abandoned the family. And so what do we do in those kind of situations? Well, God is not panicked in heaven. He's aware of human brokenness. And through the gospel and through Jesus, any of us can not only be forgiven, but we can have hope of the future. And we have, through Christ, access to the Father, the perfect Father that we've all needed and longed for in our lives and haven't had necessarily on earth. And Jesus said that through him and through faith in him, we can know the Father, we can pray to the Father, and he hears our prayers uh, he gives us his Holy Spirit. He forgives us of our sins. He provides what we need in life. He strengthens us. Uh, he comforts us, it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. So God plays all of those roles in our lives and in the lives of his children. But too often, believers may know Jesus, but they don't know how to relate to God as a father uh, because of their woundedness or nobody's ever walked them through that. And so they're missing out on the daily enjoyment of that faith relationship with God as a father. And so it's amazing that a lot of ministries that deal with addiction uh, or depression, a lot of times what is the breakthrough for people is when they begin to relate to God as a loving father and they realize that they can be his beloved child. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's how we get our, our identity, you know, yes. we can just completely wipe that all away. It's a beautiful time for these films to be coming out in this way because we're celebrating Christmas and that's when people celebrate the birth of, of Christ and, and just everything that God the Father did through Christ. Um, what are some of your favorite films to watch during the holidays? Well, it's it's hard to get away from It's a Wonderful Life. We, right. you know, I know a lot of people watch that, but it's such an encouraging story. Uh, still gets me uh, emotional at the end when he reconnects with his family at the very end. Um, I, and that's not a great film just for theology. So we're, we're not pointing that for theology, but as far as family connections and the fact that there is a God and that your life is precious, uh, we like it's a wonderful life. Um, let's see, other, uh, my, my family enjoys White Christmas. It's an old movie from the 50s. And uh, what other the, we watch the nativity story, yeah. uh, sometimes and just again, we'll parallel it with scripture as we're reading the Christmas story with our kids, which is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, I love the whole Christmas season because you've got the smells, you've got the lights, you've got the music playing in the background, uh, families getting together. It just it's my favorite time of year, and uh, and I'm grateful that even this time at Christmas, Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, it's exciting when one of our films comes out and we hear people are giving them away at Christmas. Like we're yeah. giving away hundreds of copies of uh, Show Me the Father and Courageous Legacy at Christmas this year. And we're excited about sharing that with people that we love, you know, so it's a lot of fun. You know, what's amazing about your films is that I feel like audiences walk away with kind of the sense of a responsibility to go and make the world a better place or go and, you know, kind of step into the call, whether it's the call of yes. being a, a father as Christ is, you know, as, as God is a father to us or, you know, all, I feel like all of your movies have that, that charge. Um, I know you guys are working on another film. Uh, when can we expect that? And, um, and, and you can also address Obviously, I, I know it's intentional, but kind of why is it that you you do that through your filmmaking? Yeah, so, uh, well, we want all of our films, you know, we're all give, given uh, a limited number of years and we want to make the most of our of our time. You know, there's a great uh, verse in scripture that says, Lord, teach us to number our days. In other words, that you don't waste the precious time you've been mm. given. So if mm. we're promised, you know, 70 years or so, you know, most people today live between 70 and 85 or so. Um, of those, the first ones are learning about life, and the last ones are 
resting and, and learning to love or, or mentor other people. So the middle ones are mainly your fruitful years. And so we want to be fruitful while we can. And so the movies that we make, we don't want to just entertain people. That is a part of watching a movie. We do want them to be entertaining, but that's not the primary motive. We want people to draw closer to a walk with God, their creator, and uh, to get to know him through Jesus Christ. And we believe that that is the most fulfilling uh, and purposeful way to live life is to know the Lord. And so that's what we want to do with our film. So I'll only tease you with this. We have already shot our next film. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the can and we are now editing it and it's based on a true story and it'll come out. It's right back there being edited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and so close. Uh, we are, we are uh, planning on releasing it maybe August, September next year, Lord willing. And so we're very excited about it. So once we get uh, uh, Show Me the Father and Courageous Legacy released on DVD streaming and, and give it its, uh, its space, we will start uh, showing trailers and, and sharing this incredible true story that we're working on right now that we're very excited about. And let me an answer your question this way. You talked about inspirational films. How many times have you walked out of a theater or watched a movie and you thought, what a waste of my time? They just sapped two hours of my life away, uh, dishonored my values. I uh, watched people get slaughtered or you know mistreated or things get twisted. And uh, God was completely ignored. You know, it's almost an atheistic universe in the movie that I just watched. And uh, I don't feel more in love with my wife or more in love with the Lord after watching that film. I'm, I want to apologize to God for watching it, you know. So <laughs> we are very careful in what we watch now. We're very careful in what we let our kids watch. Um, we will check things that plugged in online and then we will filter them even when we watch them a lot of times using the filters that are available now. But for us personally, we're thinking, well, what kind of movies do we want to see? I want to see a clean movie I can watch with my whole family. Uh, I want to be entertained. I want to be emotionally challenged. I want to laugh. I want to cry. I want to be uh, encouraged. I want to learn something. I want to, and then I want to walk away uh, glad I watched that movie, ready to share it with other people, ready to watch it again, you know, impacted deeply. And for me, to be, get some wind in my sails, to go live my life for God's glory. And so in our situation with all of our films, we're like, man, entertaining movies out of Hollywood are a dime a dozen. I mean, just, and a lot of them are garbage. And so we are, we are saying, God, let's use this medium that you have given us to, yes, make people laugh, cry, hopefully cheer them on, tell them an engaging story, but let's take them on twists and turns where they discover how awesome our God is because Jesus is a way better hero than anybody in a Marvel movie, you know, oh, yeah. um, and having a relationship with God, the redemption stories that we see in scripture are far better than any kind of made up story in Hollywood. So we're taking true testimonies. Sometimes we're crafting multiple together along with scripture. And, uh, and we're trying to, with every one of our films, serve up something that's not only nutritious, but it's delicious as well. And so <laughs> there's a lot of Hollywood movies that taste good a little bit, but you walk away and you feel like you were poisoned instead. So, mm. And that's true. Every day as the time passes, we see art is just becoming contaminated with political correctness or inclusivity that completely you know, takes away from our values. So I appreciate that from you guys. You guys always have a good amount of emotion and and and, and comedy and, and all of that. It's just always a perfect fit. And really, I know it's the, the breath of the God on your stuff. Like from the moment I saw the first film you did, uh, you guys are here now. Can you believe your films are still being received so well? Well, uh, yeah, well, I mean, we're grateful. We, we just, you know, I, I think anything that the Lord blesses is going to have an impact. And so we seek his blessing. We want his favor on our, on our films. And so um, I think the smartest thing that we ever do is dedicating our projects to the Lord, asking for his guidance and his blessing. And, uh, and, and he gets the glory for it. You know, yeah. if they work uh, to whatever degree they make an impact, he gets the glory for it. And we're just happy to be uh, on the journey. Well, thank you guys so much. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Um, just as point of clarification, the uh, the church site licenses, mm -hmm. all the DVDs that you buy anywhere or digital downloads, it'll say at the beginning they're for home use only. 
And so there are licenses like CVLI licenses and some of those others that are out there. None of those apply to the films that we have made. And so uh, the church licenses, though, don't just come with a DVD or copy of the movie, but they give you ways to be able to print tickets that you can sell and recoup the cost. They give you yeah. follow up resources. Uh, they give you marketing resources and designs and artwork that go with the film and all the music licensings that go with that. And you can show it again and again, you know, at no extra cost throughout the year to as many groups as you want. And so we would encourage people, please take advantage of this. With some of those licenses, it's like less than 10 cents a person uh, with some of those bigger licenses. And the ministry impact that you can have in your community can be huge. And people will show up to see a movie that won't show up for other things. And it's a great opportunity to, after you've shown the movie, to either minister to them or give them an invitation. At the end of this film, some people have done blessing times where they invite the men to come forward and they're praying prayers of blessing over the men because we talk about the blessing that's in the film. It's also an opportunity to launch into a study from scripture, either about the fatherhood of God or manhood or healing, you know, forgiveness, whatever it may be. So um, these movies, both Courageous Legacy and Show Me the Father, are going to be available uh, December the 7th. And we would tell people, please use these as Christmas gifts, use these to minister to your family. And Courageous Legacy, it's the best version of the film. People who liked Courageous years ago, it's a new edit. It's recolored. It's got a new ending in it. It's a fun ride. So we hope people will take advantage of that one as yeah. well. So funny, funny thing. I was just thinking about when I first saw Courageous, I was the beginning of me and my husband's journey, uh, uh, you know, in our marriage. And he, you know, we printed out the contract, he signed it. And then I'm thinking, you know, where it is now, it's in our war room. Yeah. <laughs> it's, in yeah. our prayer. Yeah. it's hilarious. Yeah. It's in our prayer closet, which is our war room. That's um, great. So, yeah, I mean, I really appreciate you guys and just how God uses you. I was, th I was thinking you make it easy. My husband's a pastor. But you make it easy for the pastors who will show it to the audiences because you put so much scripture, you know, you structure it in a way where God already, you know, is preaching to people. So I thank you guys so much and appreciate it. And I really appreciated you sharing your story, Stephen, uh, through adoption and all that in Show Me the Father. Um, it also resonated with me because we were on our process of adoption and then we got our miracle baby, but we're still going to adopt. So wow. it just really blessed us um, in so many ways. But I really appreciate you guys. Awesome. Oh, good to Jeannie. talk to you. Yeah, today. good to talk to you, Jeannie. It's always good Thank to you. hear your voice. And we love your testimony as to what the Lord saved you out of and what he's doing with you now. It's just beautiful.